Well, I've got a fungus, everybody, and I've also got quite a lot of rain. There's been rain on my head, and I don't like it when it falls on my head because it ruins my hairdo. I am sitting with the fungus and a number of fungi, I suppose, and they are growing out of a rhino midden. In other words, I'm sitting on a pile of material that has come through the digestive system of a rhinoceros. Here it is, very nice. And there is the beautiful, beautiful mushroom. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's called a bush black cap. I think that's what it's called. And I believe that they are quite toxic. And it leaves a sort of inky residue on the fingers there. And I must remember now just not to suck my thumb, David. Mm. Otherwise I'll start seeing goblins where there aren't any. I'll start seeing gremlins, like the ones I described yesterday evening. Now, Abigail, I think you wanted us to show you some dung, and I think you were probably not hoping so much for a, a fungus here, but something from another kingdom entirely, some worms. And I don't think that we would find worms in here. I think that we would find bacteria if we were to sort of look deep enough and then sort of examine underneath a microscope. I think we'd find some bacteria. Oh, it's quite nice and warm in there, David. Are you feeling cold? We can just cover you in warm dung. It's only warm because there is metabolic heat here. Now, that means that there are organisms underneath the ground here. It also means that this is a superb insulator, so there's probably it's probably holding the warmth from yesterday from the sun it was quite a hot day but I suspect also that if you dig in here there is a lot of metabolic heat that's coming from the creatures that are living in here that'll be bacteria it'll be dung beetles oh look this is fantastic I'm just going to open this up and then we're going to cover it up again Dave have you ever wondered what a dung beetles lava looks like there it is look at that disgusting looking thing everybody you're going to be disgusted by what you witness now. You see that? Yep. That is a, what we'd used to term when we were kids, a cutworm. Isn't that cool? I will cover it up again because it's going to become a valuable, valuable dung beetle. And I think it's being tended, if I'm not mistaken, by some termites. No, it's not. Those are its legs. I don't want to take it out because I think it'll get a, a nasty fright. Isn't that amazing? So that'll be the larva of a dung beetle. And what it's doing there, of course, is just eating dung until it becomes uh, sort of old enough to pupate. And then it will pupate and become a beetle. It'll go through the full hollow metabolic life cycle and is burying itself again. That's very clever of it. Yew! Timon and Pumba would have uh, really liked eating this thing. Isn't he amazing? He's like one big muscle of dung eating. All right, I'm going to cover him up again. I don't think it's very fair to uncover him like that. But it's from his metabolic heat and the metabolic heat of any uh, lots of other animals that this amazing pile of dung is maintaining its heat. Now, let me just give this a smell. It's much, much less fragrant than elephant dung, and that's because, of course, it's not uh, as varied. This is just grass. There's nothing else in it, uh, unlike an elephant's dung, of course, which contains many different kinds of leaves and bark and all sorts of things. That makes it smell like potpourri. This just smells like earth, really, which is a very pleasant smell, especially on a bit of a rainy day like this. Good. On we go.